Hello and welcome to part two of my sort of learn to play playthrough of White Star Rising, part of the Nations at War series from Lock and Load Publishing. The scenario we're doing is let's get this liberation going. Now in the last video we saw the American armour completely obliterate the armoured infantry that was stationed in Aromanche just to delay the armour's advance inland. We also saw the American infantry start to move forward. Poor old Germans though did not get an activation during turn one and that's why we've got this end turn card here with their activation marker on top of it because this end turn card does not go back into the pack, into the deck, until they've had their activation. So they are guaranteed an activation this turn. The victory conditions, if you remember, the Americans have to control these three towns before the end of turn 10. Otherwise, they've lost. And the Americans have also got two lots of off-board artillery to use as and when. So let's shuffle the deck. Here we go. And also the solo assistant, which we didn't actually get a chance to use last turn. There we go. So let's see what turn two brings. First card. Ah, it is the American infantry. And now we've got a card turned over. We can actually see there are numbers written on it. These three numbers actually duplicate what's on the, the HQ, so we don't have to keep picking it up. The first one here is actually the formation's morale. These two numbers here are the sort of combat range of the HQ for good order and for reduce. So we can see four hexes for good order. And this is the leadership modifier, again, for good order and for reduced. So, as before, working our way through the operation phase summary, we can see the first thing is unit formation marker removal. Well, we did that at the end of the last video. Check command status. As you can see here, it's four. And all the infantry units are in command, so they can receive orders. Perform rallies. No, nobody is disrupted. Perform fire missions. Now, I was going to save them, but I'm thinking... I might use one of the fire missions to get rid of, or try to <laughs> get rid of that anti-tank gun and use the other one for the flat gun. Let me just take these off a minute because I know they're there, but I can't see and you can't see what's underneath. Just for now. Right. Now to perform a fire mission, which is what this is, the HQ has to be able to spot the target. Now, even though we've got some woods in the way, I think because they're a hex, they're not adjacent, they're not snuggling up to the, uh, to the woods, in which case they wouldn't be able to see this. But because they are a hex away, they're not adjacent, you can actually see over to the anti-tank gun hope that's right. So I'm going to say yes, and we're going to loose one of our barrages, which is a bit of a shame because these, these can actually hit not only the uh, sort of hex, ooh, we get in focus, the hex that, um, that we're aiming for, but also the six hexes around it, but we've only got one here. So, first thing we do is to see if the boys controlling the artillery actually hit the target. 
So we throw one die. If we get a one, it misses. Here we go. Oh, lucky six. Now we can unleash one of these. There we are. So we're going to throw three dice and we need to get four or more. <laughs> oh, crikey, that's a miss. Now, do we do it again and use all our barrages up or do we save one for here? You know what, I've got the ump. I'm gonna use, use the second one because then at least we can sort of advance a bit before this flak can get at us. That's my thinking, but remember, I'm not the greatest tactician. So, gone. Let's see if it hits. First of all, yes, see if it's on target. We mustn't throw a one. Just move that down a little. There we go. Oh, I thought it was then. <laughs> now we throw three dice and we have to get four or more. Do you know what, crikey? One hit. That's gone. One hit. Now the defender, we've got one hit. Now the defender has to roll to try and save, but... It is a soft target because it has a NATO symbol and therefore has no save, only the terrain it's in. And looking on the terrain effects chart, we can see here, Hill, the only defensive bonus they get is 1d6 if attack from ground level, but it's a little number one there. And that says... Hill bonus is not applicable if attacking unit is mortar or artillery. So there we go. Doesn't get any save. And automatically gets one hit. And that is a disrupted counter. And that can't fire. Disrupted units cannot fire. They can move, but they have to move. If they want to move, they have to move away from the enemy, they can't move towards an enemy or into its line of sight. So, that's the fire missions over. <laughs> now we move, at least we know now, this thing can't fire at us with uh, opportunity fire. So, we can move with impunity. This thing, remember, the flak has a range of four, normal range, for HE. So that's eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for extended range. That's a bit of a ways away yet. So we'll move these. They've got a movement value of three. And as I said before, clear roads, cultivated, even woods are one for soft targets. One, two, three. 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 Now I'm taking a bit of a chance, but we've got to move forward because we've only got 10 turns because this mortar is probably going to attack now. And it's probably going to attack my HQ stack anyway, but there we go. Right, they can do no more. And so have Ops Complete put on them. And there we are. So that's the um, infantry taken care of. Who's next? Oh, end turn. But it won't until this has been activated. Next. Oh, it's the armour. This, in case you're wondering, can't opportunity fire that mortar because it has to have line of sight for that. It can only fire during its activation and only during the fire mission phase, I believe. So once again, because this is out of action, 
These can move up. These have a movement allowance of four. This stack is on the road, so one, two, three, four. And this is going to come up behind one. Oops. Made a bit of hash of that because I'm left handed. So excuse my arm. One, two, three, four. There we go. <laughs> and they are ops complete. There we go. Next card. Give you three guesses. Yep, it's the Germans. So, of course, this would go back. And this, of course, would go, we know what it is, but for completeness sake, we'd go back into the deck. So here we go with the operations phase summary. Unit formation marker removal. Check command status. As we can see again from the handy dandy card, Morales 7, it's a good order. Command range is four, so they're all okay. And that means, as this one is in command range, it can have a go to rally to get rid of that disruption. Now, as you saw, the morale of that formation is seven. So that unit has to throw seven or less with two dice. So we'll see how they get on. Here we go. Oh, they've only gone and done it four. That's not good for us. <laughs> it is now perform fire missions. So this mortar can now fire. And we're going to use the solo assistant deck for that. While we're on the subject of the cards, let me just show you this from the rule book. Here's an example of one of the cards. The card is split sort of into two. We've got the red, yellow and blue of the priority orders. And down here are the secondary orders. These colours correspond to distance. The red is for reduced range, yellow for normal, and the blue for extended range. Remember, red or reduced range is half or under its normal range, and the extended range is up to twice the normal range. For fire missions, what we're looking for as the Germans is any mention of off-board or on-board artillery on any of the priority missions. So let's see if they're actually going to fire. Now, they're going to fire at the nearest player unit, and that would be these. The problem is, because the mortars only have high explosive, firepower. See if we can see it. There we are. 14 is its range. Remember underlined means it can't go double and it doesn't get any bonuses for going sort of uh, point blank. It will throw two dice and try and get five but because these are hard targets the best they can do is disrupt them. But that'll help. So let's see if they do their mortar attack. Obviously the HQ can spot the tanks trundling up the road there. So let's see what we get. There we go. That can be on any of these but on the yellow bit we've got off board or on board indirect fire. That's good enough for me. So they're going to fire two dice and they can try and get a five. Oh, they got one. Now, mortars attack the hex, not the units. So, um, everything is affected that's in the hex. Now, because there's a hard target in the hex, the Americans can throw one dice, can throw one D6, and if they get a five or more, they've negated that hit. If not, one of them is disrupted. Two, no. <laughs> so, doesn't matter which, they're both the same. We'll do the bottom one. That bottom tank is disrupted. And 
there we are. And this mortar is marked OPS complete. Next, this one. This is still the nearer units. So this is going to try and fire, it's going to use its armor piercing, which has stats of, where are we? Six, three, five. They are within normal range. So we're going to look on the yellow hexagon of the priority mission to see if that works. Oh, look at that, fire closest vehicle. So there we go, that is a vehicle, and it is the closest, so they're going to fire. I'm hoping this is how the old deck works. I'm having fun anyway. Three. So three dice, they've got to get five. They can, the tanks this time, because it's not a mortar attack, can actually use their armor saves. Three dice at five. Oops. Ah! One. One hit. It's, they go after a single unit. It's not like mortar attacks. So their save is three dice at six. They can get one six. That's save because remember, we've already got one disrupted there. No, it's another hit. So a decision has to be made now. Do we disrupt this one so they're both disrupted or do we reduce that one? Let's throw a die. You could of course make the decision yourself but I'm trying to be as random as possible using the deck so let's see what would happen. Because remember it's not me playing, it's the bot. So odds even. <laughs> that gets reduced. Not a good day for the uh, tanks. That is marked OPS complete. What about this? These are good. This has got four, so eight extended. One, two, six, seven, eight. No, we're still okay. So they're not doing anything, of course. We could draw a card from them, but it'll probably say fire or move or something we don't want to do. So we'll leave it at that. And that, if you remember, is going to be that because the last card is the end turn. Right, what we'll do is we'll get the end turn markers off. And then I'll start videoing again for turn three. We'll just move the turn counter forward. And we'll come back and do turn three. Right, it's turn three. Let's just move that out of the way. We will shuffle the formation deck. Get that nice and shuffled, hopefully, and also the assistant deck. those in and we'll give it a shuffle keep everything above board okay and the first card is <laughs> who shuffled these and turn Armour. Tanks. 
So here we go with the operations phase summary. Unit formation marker removal, done that. Check command status. The command range is four, so that's tickety-boo. Perform rallies. Now we do have a disrupted unit here. Oops. And reduced. So we'll see if we can rally that. Bring this over here. The morale of the formation, as you can see, is seven. So we need to throw seven or less to uh, rally that reduced unit. Look at that, look. <laughs> Not be much luck. That is still disrupted. Don't think there's any point in moving this. So I think we'll keep it there. We're going to get shot at. And you may be saying, do this. I'm going to keep them there. And we're going to move the headquarters. One. Now. This can now see us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's at extended range, but it's going to have a go at... Opportunity fire. So on the blue. Execute counteractions, no. Doesn't say the word fire. So I'll move it again. I'll try and use my other arm, but I'm left-handed and it's a bit wobbly with this one. Two. So I'll put that there. It's going to try again. This time, though, it is in normal range. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're on the yellow. It says fire. It's going to have an op fire at us. It's stats for hard targets, if you remember, is 635. Six is the range. Three is the firepower. Five is the two hit number. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So three dice at five. It's not looking good for the HQ. Oh, what could have been worse? One hit. Now, excuse my arm. The tanks have a save. The tanks have save stats of 3-6. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any help from the HQ because the leadership modifier, as you can see, is two, is only used for rallying for units in that stack and to add firepower two again units in the stack so that tank is on its own so one hit three dice need a six no crikey so one of these tanks he is disrupted we'll do the bottom one there we are. And because a unit in the stack that the HQ is in has been disrupted, the HQ has to check if it's uh, affected at all. So we roll one die. If we throw a one, that HQ is reduced. Oh, thank goodness. Right. What I forgot to do, of course... I think we're going to save it. We're not going to move those anymore. I think we're going to leave the tanks there. I'm just going to put whoops, these ops complete on. There we go. Okay. Not, not looking good. Next card. It's the infantry. Again, we'll just move that for a sec. Oh, by the way, that should have been marked Ops Complete as well, of course, because it did Opportunity Fire. We're okay with this. This can only fire during its activation, but this now might become a problem, and we've not had a look at it for a little while. It's quite... Um, 
quite powerful. It's got a, a range of four, so that's eight when it's extended. Three dice at four. So. What are we going to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to start attacking, isn't it? So we'll better move in. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That can now op fire. Let's see if it does. It's at extended range. Execute counteractions. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It can. Ops fire on the blue. No. One, two, I think we're going to move forward. Three. Is that in line of sight? Let's have a look. No, uh, ooh. Yes, I'd say it was just, again, we're still at extended range. Nothing. Opt complete. One, two. So that's move two. Whoops. And that's an extended range. No. And three. It's all a bit tense. One, two, three. Seven, eight, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, seven, eight. Blue again. No. <laughs> and let's move the HQ. One, two. Now is that in it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, that's no three and again no. So they've all moved, but there's going to be some shooting from the Germans, I dare say, when they activate. Next card. It is the Germans. Here we go. Remove ops complete. What should we do first? Oh, first thing is going to be fire missions. There's nothing to rally. So fire missions. So it's this Malta who has uh, stats of 14, two firepower and five to hit. Sure, the rules say they've got to attack the nearest player unit. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going after the tanks. So, as always, it's got to have some indication of on board. There we go. Off board or on board, or sorry, off board, or, yeah, off board or on board, indirect fire. There we go. So it's firing at the tanks, two at five. Again, it can only disrupt. More worried about the tanks than the infantry. So, two at five. One hit. They do get a save dice because it's a, or save die, because there is one hard target. So we need a five or more. And they only go and do it. Look at that. So that's saved. B. 
bit of luck there. And that's them out the way. Next, let's have this attack and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Hmm. So they're both the same distance away. So what we'll do is we'll have odds and we'll have evens. Evens are going after the soft targets and their stats for soft is two dice at five. They are one, two, three, four, normal range. Let's see if they do. Well, let's see what they're gonna do actually. Low risk towards, low risk movement towards. No, fire, closest vehicle. Oh, it's gonna go after the tanks. So, <laughs> that was a waste of time. The bot says no. So they're going after the tanks. That does mean they have three dice at five. They're at normal range, one, two, three, four. They can hurt the tanks. One hit. Whoop. One hit. Now the tanks do get a save because they have their armor. Three at six. No, so a hit is gonna, oh, crikey. So, it would make sense for the Germans to destroy that reduced tank platoon. But I'm not playing this. That's not, you know, I might not do that. Somebody else might have reasons to want to disrupt the other one. So we'll leave it to chance. Odds, even. Odds, it's going to disrupt the other tank. As I say, you might not have done that. I might not have done that, but I'm not playing it. It's the old, oh crikey, it's the old... Uh, Oh, slippy slidey. It's the old bot doing it. So, excuse me, fingers. I don't like to use my fingers because they're big. And I knock things flying. There we go. Right. That, at least, is ops complete. It just leaves the flat gun, which has a range of three. I keep forgetting. No, range of four. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is as extended range. Let's see what it does. It will be firing at the HQ. Well, if it's gonna fire, it's gonna fire at the HQ. That's the nearest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what it does. Extended. Nothing. So we move down here. And the only other units we've got are infantry and they're not gonna do anything. So let's see if this flak does anything with these secondary. Disrupted AEO. No, there are no disrupted. Highest firepower AEO. Farthest from a disrupted unit. Fire. Now, that could be the tanks. But it can't see the tanks because the hill's in the way here. Move off board units onto the map. No, so nothing happens. I'm hoping that's right. That leaves that open, oh no, that's the end of the turn, isn't it? They don't do anything. And end turn. So there we are, things are starting to hot up. We'll just move this out the way. Because that's the end of the turn. And we'll remove the ops complete markers. I think we'll leave it there. Another couple of turns under our belt. Hope you're enjoying it. Again, this is me learning the game. It, it's not a heavy tactics strategy <laughs> type thing. I'm just playing the game and uh, having a bit of fun and trying to show you uh, what this game is all about. So I hope that's coming across. But before we uh, wrap up, let's just move the turn counter ready. Oops, I don't know how that worked, that got swapped over. 
And that means the old chaos marker now gets put into the deck. So we'll do that next time. Ready for turn four. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please subscribe, push the like button of the video, push the bell, that'll tell you when I upload stuff. Leave a comment by all means, because I'm bound to have made some, uh, some mistakes. And as always, mustn't forget my subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much. So this has been part two of a playthrough, a learning to play playthrough of White Star Rising, part of the Nations at War series from Lock and Load Publishing. So we'll see what happens next time, the poor old tanks, dear oh dear. And I think the, uh, the infantry are gonna start getting a bit of grief as well. So until then, you take care and goodbye.